Hello friends, welcome to Rajas Data Engineering. This is continuation to our Delta Live Table series. I have already covered three topics in Delta Live Table. In the first video, I covered introduction to Delta Live Table. I talked about what is Delta Live Table. In the second video, I talked about the differences between declarative and procedural approach. Delta Live Table is using declarative approach. I covered what is the importance of declarative approach and how it is powerful compared to procedural approach. In the third video, I talked about different types of data sets used in Delta Live Table development. And in this video, I am going to cover one another interesting feature, which is expectations. With the help of expectations, we can perform data quality and data validation operations in Delta Live Table. What is expectation? Expectation is one of the feature provided by Delta Live Table in Databricks to perform data quality and validation checks. In any data engineering project, validating the data is very important step. We have to identify the corrupted or bad records and we have to put proper mechanism to handle that. And with the help of this expectation, we can define different constraints on column of a data set. Data set could be tables or views, which is containing list of columns. And we can uh, put certain con constraints, uh, data validation checks on the column with the help of this expectation. And the uh, expectations are optional. Even though it is optional, it is very commonly used in all the Delta Live Table developments. We can define expectation with the help of Python decorators or SQL constraint class. There are uh, differences in syntax. In another video, I will cover different examples using Python decorators and also SQL constraint. In this video, I will give uh, some simple um, uh, basic uh, syntax using Python decorators. Coming to Python decorators, it's one of the concept in Python using which we can extend the functionality of a existing method. So we can add extra functionalities on top of the ex uh, existing user defined function that is called Python decorators. And uh, with the help of this expectation, basically we can identify good and bad records and also apply actions on violated records. So just to summarize, what is expectation? Expectation is efficient framework provided by Delta Live Table using which we can define data quality checks instead of writing verbose logic on our own. In case this expectation feature is not available, then with the help of uh, PySpark or Spark SQL, manually we have to write a lot of code to perform the validations. But with the help of this uh, expectation, the, uh, the entire data quality check is simplified. Simply we can uh, configure the expectations, then according to that we can perform the data quali quality checks. In order to define the expectation, first we need to understand its structure, its components. Expectation is having three major components. Let me explain in this simple syntax. So in order to define expectation, first of all, we have to start with keyword at the rate DLT. At the rate, that is Python decorator, TLT, which is Delta Live Table. This is the constant keyword. Then after that, we are having three components. Expect or drop, this is one of the component. Total count, that is the second component. And count greater than or equal to one. This is another component. So it's important to understand the components. Then we can define our expectations in a development. So coming to this one, total underscore count. This is nothing but name of the constraint. So you want to apply certain data quality check. You know, for that you want to give some meaningful name. So this is user defined name. We can give anything. In this case, I have given total count, total underscore count, but we can give any name for this. So this name of the constraint, this is one of the component and constraint definition. This is the place where we are performing the actual data quality check. So here in my data set, I'm having one column called count. So that count column cannot accept any value which is lesser than one. So here I'm defining using the condition, the logic count should be greater than or equal to one. This is the definition of the constraint. So this is another component. And coming to the third component, which is violation action. In case there are some records which is violating this uh, constraint, then what we have to do? We have to drop or we have to warn. You know, there are different uh, actions I will cover in the next slide. But basically, we have to define the violation action in this part. So these are the three major components. With the help of this, we can define different types of exceptions. What are the different types of actions? Let's say there are certain records which is violating the defined constraint. 
then what kind of action should be performed by the delta live uh, table engine so there are three different types of actions warn drop and fail i have given the syntax for all the three different cases the first one now we are defining the expectations using alterate dlt then i am simply giving expect i don't give one keyword so by default whenever we don't define any action it will be considered as warning so for warning we don't need to mention explicitly instead of that simply we can give expect expect then within that we can give a meaningful name for the constraint and also we can define the logic what happens when we are uh, defining this warning so even though there are some uh, bad records or violated records still the process will continue and even the corrupted or you know bad records will be returned to the target system but at the same time only in the matrix in the execution matrix um, a delta live uh, engine it will display the number of records which got violated so basically we can see the uh, warned uh, records number of records but still the even the violated records will be returned to the target table and uh, the second action is drop for that we have to use the keyword expect or drop so inside you know we are, we can uh, define meaningful name and also the definition of constraint so in this case what happens is in case you know there are certain records which is violating this uh, constraint then those records will be removed from the processing will be dropped then only the uh, records which is uh, complained to that uh, def definition of constraint only those records will be written to the target table and the third action is fail for that we have to use expect or fail so here also we have to define meaningful name and the definition of the constraint so in this case in case there is some violation at least for one record then the entire process will be failed then manual intervention would be needed so the developer has to Uh, troubleshoot and they have to understand what is the reason for this failure then they have to correct that record then uh, we can rerun so in all the cases we can see the matrix in the execution logs i hope you understood different types of violation actions and here i have given simple example using pyspark and also I, here i have given just only one constraint within uh, one expectation but ideally we can uh, combine multiple conditions also within one single expectation so those things i will cover in another video i will come up with uh, uh, different types of uh, syntaxes for pyspark and also sql constraint class and also i will uh, cover you know different types of examples even complex examples but i hope you understood what is the expectation in delta live table what is the importance of that and uh, how you know we can define uh, expectations and what are the different types of violation actions we can uh, consider while uh, creating the expectations i hope you understood the concept hope this video is uh, useful if you like the content of this video please like and comment in the channel don't forget to subscribe this channel thank you